Hello and welcome to my channel. This is an R node, a radio node, and I'm using it to send and receive data on the reticulum network, the off-grid communications network, using the reticulum mesh chat software today. And what I want to show you is um, how this can be used to look at web pages which are being served on the uh, reticulum net. So how are we going to do that? <clears throat> um, if we take a look at my screen that you can see here already, this is the mesh chat program that's running. And um, <clears throat> what I've done is I've disconnected this laptop from the internet, from its network. The uh, Wi-Fi is turned off and the Ethernet plug is unplugged. So there's, there's no network connectivity <clears throat> on this um, laptop. <clears throat> and what I've done is I plugged in an R node, a radio node, that uses the 868 megahertz ISM frequency band in Europe. Maybe in other countries that could be different, like 915 megahertz. Please check the regulations before you transmit where you shouldn't. And I've already shown <clears throat> other videos in this series. You can take a look at how to install the software and how to configure the R node. Um, I assume that you know how to do that. <clears throat> if we look in the uh, mesh chat program here at the um, interfaces, there you can see the interfaces that are present. The only one that's connected in green is this one, <clears throat> which is at R node I just showed you on 867.5 megahertz. And you can see that there's been data flowing through it, transmit and receive. The default interface is the name given to the connection to the internet or <clears throat> ethernet, LAN, whatever you're connected to. So that's the uh, ethernet port on a, on a computer and the Wi-Fi. Those are disconnected. <clears throat> I also was connected earlier for another video to some test nets, um, which are present in the reticulum network. Those are also disconnected because I pulled out the plug. So the only thing that's connected here <clears throat> is the, uh, the radio node. So any data sent and received from this computer has to go through the radio node. And what am I going to do? Um, I'm going to look at <clears throat> messages. And here are some uh, other computers that I've got in the same room, also running reticulum mesh chat. <clears throat> Both of these are connected also via radio only using our nodes. There's no Wi-Fi and no Ethernet connection. So if I choose this one, for example, <clears throat> you can see I've been sending test messages. If we ping it from here, from the machine I'm using, then you can see <clears throat> that it's pingable and it takes about 1.5 seconds for the ping to go there and come back. That's not the speed of radio waves, that's the low data rate of transmission. In fact, when I do the ping, hopefully you will be able to see if I show the right corner of this box. <clears throat> it's a transparent box. You should be able to see the white light come on, which always illuminates when data has been transmitted or received. So let's do ping again. There it is. You saw the uh, the light come on in the corner. That's the ping being sent and the reply to the ping being received. So it flashes twice. Sometimes it stays on for a very long time, which is what it's doing now. I don't know why it does that. <clears throat> so it's a quick way to check if these R nodes are working, either by doing a ping or by announcing your own node. Because again, when the packet is transmitted, <clears throat> if you hit the announce button, the white light should come on if everything's working and they're communicating properly. Let's try this. Uh, there's the uh, white light come on again when I did an announce. So um, that works on both the transmitting end and the receiving end. So you can see that the two lights go on and off simultaneously. Then you know there's communication. Sounds a bit like using smoke signals, doesn't it? <clears throat> or flashing lamps on ships at sea. Anyway, that works. Um, what I wanted to say was uh, to show you how to uh, look at the Nomad network, which is a subject to another one of my videos. Have a look if you haven't seen it. And when you click on these servers, then they um, <clears throat> will show you what pages they're serving. And remember, this is coming through the radio network, so it's going to be quite slow. Um, I don't know who this person is. He knows who he is. And conveniently, he had no pages loaded uh, last time I clicked on him. As you can see, there's no data flowing. So maybe that one's gone offline. So what are... Oh, no. Ah, <clears throat> no, I couldn't establish link. So the... Um, I know the radio link is working from um, the machine I'm using here, this particular machine, which is connected via radio to another machine, um, which is connected to the network. So he's um, offline. What I'm going to do is uh, click on my own server on my other machine, which is only linked by radio. So it's radio at both ends of the link. And hopefully this will be able to load the page that I created <clears throat> Yeah, previously, there it is. 
So that's this uh, little web page I made. As you can see, it took a few seconds to arrive, and that's only traveling over a distance of a couple of meters, but that's because of the, uh, the low data rate, but it works. So you can um, host web pages and you can access web pages like this through a radio link connection with this um, inexpensive <clears throat> hardware, which transmits on an ISM band where you don't need a license, you just need to stay within the regulations for uh, <clears throat> transmit time, I think it's 10% um, in a 24 hour period probably, I'm not sure, maybe you can check the regulations for me. So uh, you can go around with a mobile internet, <clears throat> which is not real internet, it's the reticulum, but it'll work even if the, the real internet has been switched off, if the uh, mobile phone car carriers have switched off their networks, <clears throat> GSM is broken or 3G or LTE or whatever you want to call it, 5G even, all those can be off. And as long as you've got batteries charged, because the mains power could be off, then you can still um, communicate like this, sending short messages, voice clips, files, small files, images, and also uh, hosting little pages like this that could have any useful in information on them. So uh, let me know about your experiences with this, if you tried it yet, or you're going to give it a try. It's quite fun, and uh, the network is increasing in size every day. What we can do is um, look at the network visualizer, which I was playing with the other day, and um, you can see, <clears throat> I don't like doing this zooming, it doesn't want to zoom today, okay. Oh, you have to zoom it by uh, scrolling, I forgot. You can see that the um, R node one, that's my one, <clears throat> which is connected to various other devices, and these red ones are broken, they're disconnected. <clears throat> Those are the, um, the normal um, connections that I had interfaces via ethernet, and these are disconnected, <clears throat> and so they're shown in red. This is Amsterdam and between the borders. And this one, the default interface is the internet connection to this computer. It's also dead because I turned off Wi-Fi and I took out the ethernet plug. So the only thing that's working is the, this is the, the terminal, if you like, my uh, keyboard and uh, display that I'm using <clears throat> to the, the node in the computer. And then that's connected via radio to the other node, which is then connected to these. So I can browse these other servers in the reticulum network, including my own one. One of these is my one, no doubt. <clears throat> and um, not seeing it there. It's probably the one that's off the screen as usual. No. Anyway, we saw it worked. Um, and that <clears throat> all that, that, that data is flowing only over the radio link. Anyway, that's enough for this short video. Please like if you did like and subscribe if you would like to. And I'll uh, see you in the next video.